My name is Bob Taylor and I'm a Senior Clinical Research Fellow at Oxford University but based here in Bangkok at the Mahedal Oxford Research Unit, also called MORU. Well, Premoquin is a useful drug for malaria elimination for two principal reasons. In patients who have Vivax malaria, you have the Vivax malaria in the blood that causes your illness, your fever, your headache, your chills, and we treat that with a drug that kills the Vivax in the blood. But what's clever about Vivax, it can actually, it has a sleeping form that rests in the liver. The sleeping forms in the liver are called hypnozoites, and Primaquin kills the hypnozoites. So that's how we can eliminate Vivax malaria. We must eliminate the sleeping forms in the liver. The other way that we can use Primaquin is for falciparum malaria. The current thinking um, with, with using Primaquin for what's called transmission blocking, that is blocking transmission from man or, or human to the mosquito, is that in the blood we have the malaria parasites that cause your illness. And then as malaria is, the parasite is dividing in the blood, male and female forms are, are developed and they're called gametocytes. And the primaquin kills those gametocytes. So you can imagine if you're giving primaquin on a wide scale to people who have gametocytes at a community level, that should reduce the transmission within the community. Now, in terms of where we can use primaquin, the mathematical modelers are telling us that the best scenario for using primaquin to block the transmission of falciparum malaria is in areas like in Southeast Asia, where we've brought down the burden of, of malaria quite considerably. And it's in that scenario that Primaquin derives us, gives us the maximum benefit. So how can we get around the idea of deploying these drugs um, on a wide scale? Well, that is quite a challenge because at the moment, Primaquin is only available in certain tablet strengths. So that limits how you can give the drug easily, for example, to children. So one of the things that I'm working on is working out different tablet strengths for both for Vivax radical cure and also for transmission blocking. And ideally, if we can come up with an age-based regimen for radical cure, that would be quite helpful. At, at the moment, taking Primaquin requires that you take it for two weeks. The Primaquin regimen that we're developing, which won't require testing for GCPD deficiency, actually is 20 days long, which is even longer. So um, we know that the longer uh, a treatment course is, the less likely it is that patients will take, take their medicines. So one study that I'm involved in, that I'm coordinating, um, is what's called the IMPROV study, where we give the dose of Primaquin for 14 days, but we also give others a dose over seven days, so a double dose over a week. And that's being tested for effectiveness and also how well it's tolerated. So that, that is a, a good approach. If you can reduce from 14 to days to seven days and it works well and it's tolerated by patients, then that, that's good news. Right, this area is particularly played is perhaps quite a strong word, but we have multi-drug resistant malaria in Southeast Asia, such that the commonly used first line drugs which are called artemisinin based combinations, they're becoming increasingly ineffective in several countries in our region. So the way to overcome that now, the thinking is that, well, we should do two things. One is we should develop what's called triple antimalarial drug combinations, where we use three drugs lumped together, a bit like treating tuberculosis. The other thing in parallel is to also develop age-based dosing regimens for transmission blocking of primaquin, because obviously if you dose by age, it's much easier compared to dose, dosing by weight. So I'm working on the age-based dosing of Primaquin for transmission blocking. We have a regimen that we've developed on paper. We need, we need now to put it into practice in this region. Why should you fund my research? Yeah, I guess that. <laughs> That's a very good question. Well, the research that I'm doing in Primaquin is very important because at the moment, very few people are using Primaquin. So we want to get to a scenario where we want Primaquin to be used en masse in malaria endemic countries. In Vivax malaria, although the burden is, is less compared to falciparum malaria, it causes huge morbidity, economic losses, people don't go to work, they're anemic, they're tired, kids don't go to school. The, the, the burden of, of disease is very important. And if we can, for a small amount of money, come up with a dosing regimen of Primaquin that doesn't require testing for GCPD deficiency, that's safe, that's effective, it could have a massive impact um, on the Vivax burden in the world. 
Well, the term translation of medicine, I think, means different things to different people. One school of thought is going from the bench into humans, and the other, which is where I'm at at the other end of the spectrum, is where you do research in patients or humans, and then you translate it into drug policy. So, for example, if we manage to produce this wonderful regimen of primaquin that is safe, that doesn't require GCPD testing, our work doesn't stop there. We've now then got to make the enormous step to get it into, into drug policy in different countries around the world. If this regimen is good, and if we can convince the WHO that it's good, and they can recommend it in their treatment guidelines, I think that will be an enormous step because many malaria endemic countries listen to what the WHO says. So that would be an important step.